Hey everyone, this is Eddie Kalegi with Tim Moore reminding you that Sportspeak is now powered by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the one-stop shop for tickets to sporting events, concerts, and so much more. Use the promo code SPORTSPEAK at checkout for $20 off your first purchase. SeatGeek, let there be live. Now, on to the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sportspeak powered by SeatGeek. I'm Eddie Kalegi. And I'm Tim Moore. We have a special guest for you today. So the NFL season, I mean, about two months away from preseason. And we talk so much football on this show all the time. And sometimes our opinions and our takes aren't the greatest. So why don't we get someone on who's actually played both major college football and in the NFL? Our next guest, a former quarterback, University of Tennessee, played for a few teams in the NFL as well. Matt Sims, it's great to have you on. Thanks for joining us today on Sportspeak. Thank you, gentlemen. Glad to pleasure to be here. Glad to talk some football with you guys and uh, a little little Mike Quick chat too. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, we've all worked with Mike Quick before, but let's dive into your college career first. You played at Louisville, went to Al Camino, and then Tennessee. So you navigated between three different colleges and then ultimately went to the SEC. Uh, take me through that decision process. I know you didn't play much for Louisville as a freshman, went to a lower level with El Camino, and then it works out with a big opportunity to play in the SEC for three years. Uh, yeah, I was very fortunate with uh, my high school career to be able to uh, have a, uh, you know, a multiple, uh, a multitude, excuse me, of options to go to and, and, and play Division One college football. And uh, that was all credit to my teammates and the coaching staff that prepared me throughout high school at Don Bosco Prep. And I'm extremely grateful for all those people there that helped me become the player uh, that, that I was then. And, uh, I decided to go to Louisville at that time because, uh, coach Bobby Petrino was the head coach there. And he was, uh, known at that time as being a little bit of that offensive guru type of guy. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for me, he decided to leave for the Atlanta Falcons very, uh, very, uh, suddenly and randomly. And, um, it's a really just a unbelievable full circle story because he leaves for the Falcons uh, Mike Vick is his quarterback. Mike gets in trouble. And then all these years later, uh, Mike and I are teammates with the Jets. Um, and it's just uh, unbelievable just, uh, you know, how, how life works that way and how certain things come full circle. But Louisville was a great experience. I unfortunately made a few bad personal decisions throughout my career there that, uh, you know, kind of put me in a situation where um, I wasn't able to regain the trust that I lost there. Um, you know, and essentially, uh, long story short, just smoked too much weed and got in trouble for doing it. And, um, even though I was doing my homework and performing extremely well on the field, uh, they were extremely disappointed with my actions off the field and rightfully so, since I was the quarterback and a leader of this, of the team, I decided to leave to go to El Camino to essentially restart, um, my career. Um, and at that time, I wasn't allowed to or the NCAA didn't allow you to transfer and then play right away. So it was transfer and sit out a year. I decided instead of sitting out a year at another school to go and play uh, junior college football in California at El Camino, was there for 11 months, had a great season, unfortunately broke my hand towards the end of it, but a lot of plays and was able to uh, earn a, another opportunity to play Division One at the University of Tennessee and uh, was there for two years. And they were two tough years since we were in a rebuilding position, but it was still the SEC. It was still unbelievable opponents and atmospheres and uh, extremely grateful for that opportunity. And despite having some adversity at Tennessee, was able to get some opportunities in the NFL and, and make the most of them and end up playing a six-year NFL career. Now, Matt, you mentioned, of course, the mistakes you made transitioning to college and so on. Yeah. So talk to me, of course, now you work with a lot of kids in high school and so on, trying to adapt to the next level and right. become a quarterback or potentially an NFL level quarterback uh, down the road. Obviously, a lot has changed since even when you played in the league back in 2014. But what would be the number one tip of advice maybe you'll give to kids transitioning? Obviously, lifestyle changes. You know, there's a lot more freedom, especially now going to college, there's money involved and so on for a lot of kids right. getting how do you best give advice to a kid at that high school level that's making that next jump in transition? 
yeah, the NIL aspect of it is definitely a, uh, is a new frontier for me. And even with the uh, expectations that some of my students have with that world, it's, it's difficult to, to use my own experiences that that wasn't actually uh, possible or legal at the time. Uh, at the same time, I did get experience with those type of things in the NFL. So I'm able to somewhat uh, give some advice in that field. And I think it's a field too, where it's so new. It's, it's so fresh. I don't really think anyone really knows exactly how to handle it, what limitations and, and how to properly police it to make sure that people aren't taking advantage of, of others in this situation. But, you know, with the good comes the bad, of course. Uh, I, I really just try to stress to all of my athletes to just keep, keep everything as simple as possible. Um, you know, have a passion for what you're doing, right? Understand that the work that you put in will, will directly result into the results that you get on the field more often than not. So it's about just training hard and smart. It's about being passionate about what you're doing and, and really just trying to keep your life as simple as possible because, you know, when you kind of let some of those outside distractions in, that's, that's where you kind of get in, uh, in trouble and that's where you lose track of what your original goal is or, or really what the, the short-sighted goal is, you know, and each and every day athletes have to just take it one day at a time, one rep at a time. You hear it, you know, in the NBA finals last night. Uh, when they're interviewing you guys on the sideline, they're just like, hey, it's all about this possession. It's all about just taking care of the ball right now, this moment. And uh, as cliche as it is, that is so true for for all athletes, no matter what your age is. Well, Matt, a Don Bosco kid, Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. You got to play and start your professional journey, at least with the New York Jets. So how cool was that <laughs> to get your first taste of the National Football League and spend multiple years playing close to home? Uh, it was fantastic. It really was. It was a special, uh, special moment in my life. And uh, to, to be able to go to games, see people that I grew up with, see people that, you know, helped me, raise me essentially in our town, you know, friends, friends, parents, all those things, people that supported me since I was a young man was truly special. And uh, a lot of a lot of really fond memories of those days of being a Jet and uh, beating the Giants in preseason games. <laughs> Well, of course, obviously, Brother Phil gets to play for the Giants and has a, I mean, a wonderful, wonderful career. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Of course, yeah. You, you always get that aspect of advice, of course, now you doing broadcasting and other things, of course, transitioning as well from a coaching perspective, as well as a player. I guess I want to get your take of what. For, for, for you, what was the hardest aspect of transitioning? Was it being a quarterback in the NFL or maybe was it transitioning to individually coaching players? Because a, a lot of guys, you know, like when they're in the league for a good bit of time, of course, I know your career is shorter than most, but it, when you look at it, it's not really hard getting, or I say, excuse me, it's very hard getting to the next step of what to do next. So I'd like to get a little bit of input from you if we you know what's the hardest thing for you from the transition going into adulthood and everything else. Yeah, great question. And, you know, there there is no right or wrong answer with this. So many of my students, they're always, yeah, hey, you know, what do you, you know, I, I ask them sometimes, hey, what do you want to do? You know, what do you want to do with your life? You know, I know football is important to you, but there's more to life than than football and sports. And, uh, you know, the, in the answers that I get are always extremely interesting. And, you know, they don't know it, but I'm actually asking because I just, you know, want to see what they're up to and what they like and what their interests are and, and, and see if we have some commonality outside of sports, too, which I think is important for uh, the teacher-student uh, dynamic. Um, usually when they give me the answer, I tell them, they say, you know, Hey, you know, maybe I want to be like you one day. I want to coach. I want to do this. And I remind them, I'm like, Hey, I'm still trying to figure it out too. And, uh, just because I'm your coach and just because I played in the NFL and have all these great experiences doesn't mean that I have all the answers. And, uh, and I think it's important for my students to understand that too, that I am, uh, like themselves, uh, an ever growing, ever evolving human being that is far more complex than just throwing a, a piece of leather uh, to another person. And just knowing that, you know, what we what we love and cherish today, you know, some of those dreams can change tomorrow. And, and there's nothing really wrong with that either. Um, you know, I would say really the toughest thing that I had, though, was the the transition from, you know, not being able to play the game that I spent the majority of my life playing. 
And, you know, in, in my situation, like in most athlete situations, there is never a time where someone says to you, it's over or you can't play anymore. And I think that's a really tough thing to kind of go through because it's, it's a, uh, it's a death that uh, of, of your athletic self that you occasionally don't want to admit that it's actually happening. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, and fortunately for me, that death has happened. And what's exciting now is that rebirth, I get to kind of become a, a different version of myself that I thought was never really capable or possible of. Um, so it's unfortunate, but it's, uh, it, it's just, you know, the analogy I could use for it is like the, the, the forest fires in Canada right now. It's sad. It's unfortunate. There, there's beautiful things in wilderness right now being burned down to the ground. The cool thing is, like we've all seen with the great David Attenborough documentaries of Planet Earth, all that, typically after something crazy like that happens, a beautiful forest regrows in that same position. And, you know, new life emerges from that, from unexpected situations. So uh, that's that's kind of how I look at it in my career. And and hopefully I can pass a few of those lessons along to to my students along the way. Yeah. And Matt, you mentioned you're ever evolving and how the lifestyle has sort of changed, but you're still involved with the game of football. I mean, Sims complete QB, you're working with high schoolers, trying to train them for that next level. I know you guys just had uh, the North South game as well this past weekend, and you've even worked in the yeah. broadcast booth with me. We did some high school games back in September. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just for those who are unfamiliar, take us through sort of your post-playing career now and what you've been doing with it and how you're still staying connected to the game. Yeah, so it was one of those things where I wasn't playing and to fill up the time of my life, I thought, hey, why not pass along, no pun intended, some of my lessons from playing to uh, the younger generation. It turned into something that was uh, started out as almost like a thing to do with my, my downtime. And it slowly just built up into this business where I have a lot of uh, students that are now across the country. And uh, I'm extremely grateful for the fact that they themselves, the athletes, their parents trust in me uh, to teach them some of the lessons that I learned the hard way and from my father and from my brother and their playing career. And uh, it, it's truly uh, just a super gratifying and satisfying moment to be able to see that light bulb turn on in their head when when you teach them something and you see them apply it there right there in person and then for them to be successful with it and to see that smile on their face is, uh, is truly special. And, um, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but all of my years of playing and coaching and, and all that were basically a, a version of me going to a master's program in the world of football, which allows me, I think, to, to speak uh, the game in, in a different light. And, you know, as clearly as I possibly can with guys like yourself and, and Jimmy Cavallo in the booth and, and, and really, again, just share my passion and love for the game that's been so good to myself and the rest of my family. Now, you knew this question was going to be coming. We mentioned it before. Um, of course, you're a quarterback. However, Mike Quick, on the other hand, we know he likes to get controlling and take control of the same <laughs> from a lot. I know you've done a lot of. Uh, stuff on ESPN radio with him for, I believe it was the high school football hour. If I have the title correct. Um, yes, sir. But I just want to make sure, cause I know quick has had a good bit of shows over his time. I remember all the way back from MSG varsity, even when I was growing up, yeah. but um, overall, Eddie and I, as I mentioned, have had a lot of experience with him, but from your perspective, do you view him more as a quarterback or a coach? Cause we've seen him in both realms. <laughs> more attention to detail than anything else. Mike is a fantastic teacher, mentor, uh, guidance counselor, all of the above uh, for, for myself personally, I'm sure for you as well. Uh, you know, with Mike, it's, you know, he, he's not someone that, uh, that, that fakes at any moment of his life. I mean, he's pretty genuine all the time, extremely honest. And, uh, you know, hey, occasionally the honesty is a little tough. The, the critique is tough, but it's, it's because he loves you and he cares about you. And I think that's important. Uh, like, like I try to show to my students, you know, I, I tell them that I love them and I care for them. And I hope that they, you know, enjoy the game as much as possible. And, you know, I think uh, Mike does that same thing for, for gentlemen like us in our field. You know, he tries to show you that love and care and passion he has for his field, but also for the person that he's working alongside with. 
Um, I'm not going to call him a quarterback um, because we can't have two QBs on the same show together. So I'm the QB. He's um, we'll, 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 we'll say that he's the center, you know, he, he starts the play, you know, and he holds down the, the front line as uh, you know, we get all the credit after. <laughs> I like that. But let's transition to the NFL now and looking at the way quarterbacking to me has sort of changed from when uh, you came into the league back in 2012. The main difference I have seen, and I'm curious to get your thoughts, is that there is more of an opportunity for smaller guys to get opportunities. And you think about Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. Now you have Bryce Young coming in from Alabama with the Panthers. And you'd think maybe the best explanation is mobility. And we've seen the running quarterback and the quarterback more as an athlete become more prominent, but uh, that's not as much the case with a Mayfield or a young. Yeah. They've got that mobility, but it's really the arm strength and teams don't seem to be as caught off guard as the size as they may have been in the past. So how has that philosophy sort of changed here in recent years? I think we're, we're getting to the point now with our generation in football, where you just, you can't knock production. And I think it's just, it's really simple. You know, when you see it on TV, when you're, you're seeing something week in and week out where someone is productive, they're performing well, they're a great leader. You could just see that they naturally have that, that it factor, right? As far as being able to move the football down the field incrementally, routinely, and, and to perform at a high level. And I think when you do those things, when you're just highly productive at your position with a, a, an emotional, with a physical you know, uh, IQ that is far superior. It's hard to deny those people of that, that talent and that ability. And, um, you know, I think the NFL right now is in just like a live action social experiment right now where, you know, they're, they're going outside of the, the norms. Um, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's a younger generation of coaches that are now in the NFL. The younger generation knows that like these norms are really just a, you know, are, are, are fake. They're not real. And there is no one way to play the position. And I think that's, what's so cool about quarterback is that, you know, you can find different personalities, different backgrounds, different cultures, different mindsets, but yet everyone finds a way to play the same position, a different way in their own beautiful way. And I think that's, what's really exciting. Cause a lot of coaches now, instead of finding a player that fits their system, they're finding great players and trying to make the system fit uh, fit around them and what they do well. And I think that's extremely important for uh, all of us in the coaching world that it's not about how much we know. It's about how much we can help, you know, the quarterback or the players perform at their highest level with the lessons that we've learned in the past and now applying what they do well for the future. Right. And, and also, I guess, getting to know that a little bit in terms of how the quarterback position has changed and adaptability, how much pressure do you think that really puts on coaches knowing that, you know, every quarterback is somewhat different now to an extent, has its own strengths and weaknesses. How, how do you really try to adapt and really try to make yourself stand out in regards to not, not, not the quarterback, but from a coaching perspective of making sure you get the objective and making sure that you can try to maximize what you can maximize. Yeah. And that is, you know, the age old question there, there is no right answer for that. All it really is, is just depends on experience, learning from that experience and then applying what you learn to it directly on the field as best as you can, you know, and, and you'll hear coaches and people in management say it all the time, you know, you got to take what you learn in the class to the grass and a lot of people have a tough time of doing that. A lot of coaches have a tough time doing that themselves. And I think that's why you see a lot of guys that in their careers were highly touted football players potentially struggle in certain instances with certain coaches because they're not tapping into that individual enough. They don't understand that individual enough or that individual themselves just isn't at the right maturity level yet to really take advantage of all of their assets right of all their ability and uh you know my former teammate Geno Smith I think is a great uh person that that exemplifies that I mean he is a player that was extremely talented when we were together in the New York Jets he had a lot of great moments when we were teammates together not enough to to convince the fan base or maybe management that he was the guy but you could definitely see that he had all of those raw attributes 
you know, the problem was is that in that business, a lot of people don't have a long enough lifeline to see some of those things through. Um, the great thing is, though, is that he displayed them enough to show the rest of the NFL that he has that ability to allow him to continue to get more opportunities. And that's why I think you see like this all of a sudden this moment where he's just, you know, a superstar in the NFL again with the Seattle Seahawks, because he's a guy that had all the tools, had all the ability, learned, grew, mature, had his knocks, got up, shook off the dust, kept going. And now he's with a guy, Pete Carroll, who is all about competition, the underdog, and those two guys just sync perfectly. And you're seeing, you know, the culmination of, of just a guy's hard work and dedication to his craft over years and years of hardship. And uh, that's something that I think a lot of players too, in this younger generation need to understand more um, is that, you know, Geno Smith became one of the best QBs in the NFL this past year and comeback player of the year, because, you know, he didn't run away from this adversity. It could have been very easy for him to just say, you know, Hey, I did my best and I'll just retire and move on. He kept fighting through it. He kept improving and he got his opportunity, you know, and, and that's the thing. You never know when that opportunity is going to present itself. It finally did for him and he maximized it and, and he deserved it. So he's a, a great lesson um, and a great role model for all young football players out there to, to understand that, just because you want it tomorrow doesn't mean that it's going to be there ready for you to have it tomorrow. It's, it's got to be just days and days of stacking over and over to improve slowly. Yeah. And the culmination of really a decade of hard work. And now he gets the big contract, really a great opportunity for Geno Smith. Matt, we'll totally. finish with this. Um, the NFL 2023 season, a lot of great talented quarterbacks, especially some of the younger rank in the AFC. Tom Brady, it appears, is finally out of the league. So <laughs> I'm wondering for you, from your mind, if you could narrow down, there's so much great talent across the league. If you could put together a Mount Rushmore of active <laughs> NFL quarterbacks, who are the four right now that rise above the rest? Active right now in the yes. NFL. Yes. Um, so, you know, obviously the first one there, the George Washington of it is probably Patrick Mahomes. Um, the next three, the next three. So the next one, wow, really putting me on the spot here, guys. I don't like it. I would say that the next one is probably going to be Joe Burrow. Third and fourth, I'm going to say – it's going to be between Lamar Jackson and then Josh Allen. So your one, two, three, four is Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. And what a special time it is to have them all in the AFC contending <laughs> yeah. in those big games. I mean, it, yeah. whenever you put on CBS, you know, with Jim Nance and Tony Romo, you were going to see an absolute show with two quarterbacks on the field. But Matt Sims, former quarterback at Tennessee and in the NFL, Thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Beak and uh, best of luck of what's to come. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Really enjoyed talking with you guys today and uh, hopefully we'll reconnect soon. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Sports Speak. Next time, we're going to have Tristan Beasel joining us to break down the NBA Finals and Major League Baseball. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, I'm Eddie Kalegi. And I'm Tim Moore. Signing off of Sports Speak. And I'm Matt Sims. Rest. Yes, there you are. Matt Sims is here as well. Eddie Kalegi, Tim Moore, Matt Sims, signing off of Sports Speak. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week.